Italians are known to be pretty friendly and laid back, but when it comes to certain social rules, don't mess with them. In fact, avoiding certain things will not only make you feel more of an Italian and not just a tourist, but it will also save you from finding yourself in unpleasant situations. I am Giada from Fluent You Italian and in this video I will walk you through some of the most confusing facts about Italy and the Italian culture so that you'll know exactly what to do in certain situations when you come to Italy. Also, you're probably unaware of at least one of these things, so I would stay till the end. If you're traveling to Italy, there's a pretty high chance that you're flying here. So the first thing you'll do once you exit the airport is probably looking for a taxi. As long as you're not having friends or family picking you up, of course. But be aware, what you really have to pay attention to is distinguish between il taxi bianco, the white taxi, and il taxi nero, the black taxi. In fact, the last ones are normally considered as taxi di lusso, luxury taxis, and so they are way more expensive. Knowing this will either help you save some money or just make you aware of the different options that you have. Important, make sure to bring cash with you. In this case, euros. For example, while some taxes do accept cards, a lot of them don't. Finishing up a trip and not having anything to pay with can be a very uncomfortable experience. Much more so if you're not fluent in the language. Even in some restaurants, cafes, and little shops, they might only accept cash. Most of all, if you have to pay for a one euro coffee, for example. This may be a shock to some of you because countries like the US say for example, accept card almost anywhere, but Italy is still adapting to all the technological changes. Do you like big breakfast and a brunch? If so, well, I'm sorry, but I have bad news. In fact, you need to know that most Italians have breakfast just with a brioche, dei biscottini e un Café, a croissant, some little biscuits, and a coffee. Having a big breakfast with eggs and bacon and waffles or pancakes is not really part of our tradition. That's why if the Italian breakfast is not really for you, that's fine. You can either make it yourself or if you're staying in a hotel, for example, you could ask them if they do la colazione continentale, the continental breakfast. Has all this food talking made you hungry yet? Well, me too. And you still haven't seen half of the delicious options that you have to choose from in an Italian breakfast. The Fluent You app has got your back. Here, for example, is an entire video about la colazione degli italiani, Italian's breakfast. You can even click on each word and you will have access to a real-time dictionary which will tell you the definition of that term or word, the pronunciation of it, and it will show you different phrases in which that specific term is used. You will gain access to this and so much more if you start your 14 days free trial right now. Go check the description down below. While you're enjoying your colazione, you might feel like drinking a little something, which could be a latte, for example. There's just one little problem with that. Latte, by itself, actually means milk in Italian. So all you will get is a glass of white milk. As a matter of fact, the Italian version of latte is a latte macchiato, which is pretty similar to a cappuccino. If you're enjoying learning all the little secrets that will enrich your Italian cultural background and that will make your first trip to Italy unforgettable, then give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below with the chance of being featured in one of our next videos. Do you know what time it is? Hmm, it's quiz time! 
Let's see if you remember. What do you have to order if you want the equivalent of an American latte in Italy? Un cappuccino, un caffè macchiato, un latte macchiato. The answer is un latte macchiato. If you got that right, bravo, brava. You're ready to order your first drink at an Italian cafe. If you are even remotely thinking of affittare una macchina, renting a car during your trip so you can evitare di prendere i mezzi pubblici, avoid taking public transportation and be more independent in a way, well, I would wait until after I tell you a little something. You need to know that Italy has some of the smallest, tightest and windiest roads ever. We call them strade tortuose, winding roads more precisely. And that's because they were initially used for carrozze, carriage only, and they were never designed for individual cars. So sure, renting a car could be a very smart idea, but only if the driver has some experience. Italian streets and highways are definitely not like the American ones, for example. That's why I would highly recommend being a pretty skilled driver if wanting to rent a car. Also because even parking might not be the easiest thing to do. Another aspect that could go unnoticed, but that I, as an Italian, have definitely noticed is how Italians, when saying bye or goodbye to someone on the phone, repeat ciao at least uh, three, four, five or more times. <laughs> Did you notice how fast she said it? In fact, ciao becomes cha. That way we can repeat it multiple times in a row. We do this to give it more character and emphasis. Let's rewatch it real quick. Now, forgive me if I'm about to make your day a lot worse, but I have to let you know that you will probably never find la parmigiana di pollo, chicken parm, in the menu of an Italian restaurant. Of course, it has Italian origins, but it's not very common for us to eat pasta and chicken with red sauce and mozzarella on top all together in the same plate. That's why chicken parm is not a very well-known dish in Italy. But if you can't live without it, don't worry. Mia mamma fa una parmigiana di pollo da leccarsi i baffi. My mom makes a mouth-watering chicken parm. So you're my guest. This next point automatically makes me think of another reason why you might be surprised the first time you eat at an Italian restaurant or a cafe. I'm referring to the fact that in Italia non devi dare la mancia. In Italy, you don't have to tip the waiter when you leave. Don't get me wrong. If you do, they will definitely appreciate it. Ma non è obbligatorio. But it's not mandatory. I believe that legally it's a voluntary in the United States as well. But it has become customary in certain circumstances to tip between 15 and 25%. Now let's do a little quiz to make sure you've been following me. What does affittare una macchina? mean in Italian, to borrow a car, to rent a car, to buy a car. Affittare una macchina means to rent a car. Going back to my invite for you to come over for dinner and taste the best pollo alla parmigiana of your life, how would you show up at uh, our place, for example? If your answer was, I'll bring some dessert or a bottle of wine, then I already like you. In fact, showing up at somebody else's place a mani vuote, empty-handed, is not considered very polite. 
Of course, it also depends on the situation, the relationship between you and the person who invited you over for dinner. But let's say that in general, we always bring a little something. It doesn't have to be anything crazy or big, just a little something to show that we appreciate them inviting us over for dinner and uh, cooking for us. It goes without saying that once you meet somebody that could be family or friend, you will most likely greet them by kissing them on the cheek. But here's a trick. There's one specific cheek you should start kissing somebody from. And it's the right one. So you would basically do this. Right? Left. Now that I've told you all the tips and tricks about the Italian lifestyle and culture, well, you're ready to get your ticket and come. We're waiting for you. Oh, and don't forget to put in your suitcase the PDF that includes everything that I've just told you. You can find it in the description below and download it for free.